ternaries. Love them, hate them, they're a part of JavaScript, and the result is that question mark should give all of us a little bit of anxiety when we see it. Be it one or two question marks, you never quite know what you're going to get when it comes to JavaScript, and it's important to use good patterns for these things. I see ternaries and nested ternaries being used and abused all over the place, and while they are necessary in some places, I find more often than not, they cause problems. Let's take a look at this and why I feel as strongly as I do. One of the first cases I'm gonna show, which is actually solved by question marks, is something Kent reported on a while back. Let's find this. So this is an article that I actually don't fully agree with. This article is about how the and and operator is not a great option when you are using JSX. The reason for that is this code, which is actually really funny he put this in here because he used to work at PayPal and I recently experienced the bug he's discussing here when using PayPal. The problem here is that and and is checking for false. So if contacts length is zero, it's going to return that instead because it doesn't pass the truthy check here. And as a result, you're not going to render an empty list. You're going to render the number zero because you put contacts.length as an actual value in the JSX. In this example, he uses a ternary instead, and you see it works as expected. Contacts.length now has two conditions where if this is not zero, then we can go down this path where we map it. And if it is zero, so it is falsy, we return null. The reason this is better here is because we're not actually putting contacts.length in the markup, we are defining two conditions for it. One condition is if this is truthy, we go this way. The other condition is if this is falsy, we go this way. And in that sense, this is better. But I also don't think this is good ever, and we have much better options. The first one, and I already saw this in chat, is you force the values in your markup to be Booleans. If you put two exclamation points in front of contacts.length here, it will behave as expected. The other problem is once these things start getting nested, they quickly start getting very messy. I kind of want to make a code example for this. So now if A is true, it'll render hello. But let's say instead of A or B, we say this is sidebar open, and we'll change this accordingly. And B is user info open. Like both well, of these true for now. Since this is all Booleans, this isn't too bad right now. And if I was to break into here, we'll say user info. And in this, I'll have another user info open and div user info. And I'm short one div. Let's call this sidebar. So if sidebar is open, we have the sidebar piece. And if user info is open, we have the user info piece. I will say first and foremost, ternaries don't make this better. They actually make this quite a bit worse. So first I'm gonna switch this to ternaries. Cool, so this is ternaries. Change this to a question mark, I have that option or null. We do this again here. There is no world in which you will convince me this is readable. It just isn't. And God forbid, once you're in code review, somebody makes a change to one of these, the diffs are not parsable. It's miserable. This is not pleasant code to read or work with. The control flow is so unclear because you're not reading top to bottom the same way anymore. You now also have to read left to right with your conditions. So sidebar open, true, we go this way. False, we go this way. But then here, true, we go this way. False, we go this way. The control flow is incredibly unclear. This isn't much better, but what I would do in most of these circumstances, honestly, is just break out a component. So I'd have like function sidebar, and this takes in sidebar open. And here, if not sidebar open return null, perfect. But now I need the user info component. So let's copy paste this. Realize this needs user info open. Throw that there, change this to user info. And now we see we're missing a prop here, which is actually really nice because we have explicit dependency chains now. And I have to put this here too, user info open Boolean. And now I can pass this here. And in here, it's so much clearer because each level now has a defined code path as part of React's component architecture. And you can define explicitly what the expectations are above. I personally don't tend to split things out there. I would just do this. So you can do props dot, props dot. But this ends up making it way clearer. The important piece here is the if statements that I'm now creating the condition, reading top to bottom. It's so much nicer because my JSX isn't multiple conditions. My JSX is consistent. The conditions happen inside of JavaScript and in every language, in JSX, in Svelte, in Vue, in any of these markup solutions, if I can move the logic in the conditions out of the markup and into the JavaScript so it returns the correct markup based on the conditions, I find that to always be more maintainable and workable over time. So this is how I would break up 
those types of situations so that you can, again, read top to bottom. That's my test for how maintainable code is almost always. Does reading this from the top to the bottom make it clear what it does and where I would go if I wanted to make a change? Function ternaries. It's no longer ternaries. It's now a different example. I should rename that, obviously. Let sidebar open equals true. Let user info open equals true. We have a div. It has a sidebar component. Also nice because this now has a name. So this has more context inherently. Sidebar open equals sidebar open. That checks out. So the sidebar will be open if I pass true here is my assumption. And user info open. I wonder what that is. Must be some dependency within it, but I have to pass it. So good to know. And now sidebar, very simple. If the sidebar is not open, return null. Now it's very clear if I got the ticket, hey, make it so when the sidebar is collapsed, you show a little icon to click on to open it. It's very obvious where to go to do that. Where in the ternary mess we had before, which I deleted, which I shouldn't have, I should have kept it. But in that previous ternary mess, I very quickly would have struggled to find where in that code the right place was to make that change. Here, it's incredibly clear. It says if props.sidebar open is false, so I could even be more explicit if I wanted to be equals false, then we return null. Now it is very clear with no comments, no additional context that if the sidebar open property is false, we return nothing. But if it's true, we return a sidebar. This level of control is something you should strive to have in your code. It makes it very clear what is causing what where. And almost every time I see a ton of ternaries leaking into your markup, it's a good excuse to break up a component or two. People are too scared to make components. I make them all the time. And this is one of the things I love about React is you can just have 50 components in a file. It doesn't care. If you have one little piece in your markup, it's like, eh, this is hard to understand right now. Break it out into a component. Pass it some Booleans. It's totally fine. Like this is a good component, in my opinion. It makes it very clear what the properties are that it expects and what the behaviors will be as a result. Don't be scared of this. Let's quickly go through this example because wait, why is that erroring? Type true is not assignable to type. User isn't subscribed to... You're still not subscribed. A video a day for months straight. You're watching all of these, but for whatever reason, half of y'all haven't subscribed to the channel. Come on, guys. Subscriptions are free. It's that little button underneath. Please hit it if you don't mind. Anyways, I want to talk about the times where ternaries are actually necessary, which is exclusively one time in our experience as web devs. Only time you actually need a ternary is when you're defining complex types in TypeScript, because there is no if in TypeScript type definitions. What do I mean? Let's let's take a look. Let's say you're making a flatten function in TypeScript where it takes an array that might have additional arrays within it and it flattens all of those into one array. So it doesn't matter how nested it is, you just want one array in the end. How would you write the type definition for that? Well, first for each element, you need to know if it is an array or not. So to check that, you can write an extends. So t extends any array is now a condition because we don't know what t is ahead of time. If we put t extends any array here, then this t will never get hit. This is now a never because we've now asserted t will always receive in any array. When you pass it something different, you get an error now because we want flatten to take whatever the types are of the arrays we pass it and return it just that type. So if this is an array we're passing, we've now hit the truthy condition here and we're going to return t number. This is another hack in TypeScript. This could also be t zero. What this is saying is since this is an array and we know that it's an array type by putting this here, we are saying we don't actually want the array type. We want whatever it's an array of. So if we pass the string array, then t array is now a string array. So if we had this is probably a more basic example type string example equals string array zero because we know it's a string array. So an element of this string array has to be of type string. So this is a really roundabout way to get a string type when you're in these weird conditionals where T could be an array or it could not be. And we want to be sure that we're getting whatever it's an array of or just the original thing. This is an example of how to do that with ternaries. Sadly, there's no way to do ifs with type definitions. Like what I would love would be if there was some way for us to do like if T extends any return T zero else return T. It's just you can't do that. TypeScript does not allow you to do logic in your code in the traditional sense because TypeScript doesn't run. TypeScript gets checked. And the ternaries can be statically analyzed where conditional code has to be ran in order for it to be understood. They've kind of just taken the ternary pattern because it already existed in JavaScript and our editors can already handle it. And it makes it easier for us to write a type definition without learning any new things. But this probably should have been a different syntax because these nested ternaries can get wild. Like, let's find one in the TRPC code base because the ternaries in here are crazy. Beautiful. 
And here's an example of TypeScripting a little too close to the sun. I want to point out this is part of the deprecated TRPC packages. They've been much better about these crazy nested ternaries since. But this type definition for inferring a handle or input is chaos. My favorite detail here is any, 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 any versus any, any, any infer T input, any, any, any. The order of these matters. Anyways, I cannot parse this code. I'm not convinced the person who wrote this can parse this code. This is not good code. I won't say it's bad because it works. And on top of that, it was probably necessary. The alternative being breaking each of these ternaries out into a flattened type def. So they're all still ternaries, but at least they're named. One bright side here is T procedure. It's not just T, which is a mistake a lot of people make. They love to just use the letter T as though it means something. This all said, these nested giant ternaries are sadly a necessary evil in complex type definitions. And while I don't think many of y'all are ever going to need to write these, because these tend to be more in library code. I know I never needed these until I started working on upload thing. For that reason, you probably shouldn't have to worry about this. But if you do, the prettier team is working hard to make them at least a little more readable. This article nerd sniped me on stream earlier, which is the reason we're talking about this in the first place. This is from the prettier team working hard to make ternaries a little less awful in JavaScript. Introduction. Formatting nested ternaries nicely in a wide variety of scenarios is a surprisingly tricky challenge. Developers have long found them so confusing to read that they end up just refactoring their code to an ugly series of if-else. That's not ugly, that's readable, bitch. I'll fight on this. Often with a let declaration, an IIFE, or a separate function entirely. All of these are great solutions, to be clear. According to beta testers, the new formatting style we've developed can take some time to get used to, but ultimately allows ternaries to be practically used as a concise form of if-else expressions in modern code bases. Historical background. Prettier's original naive approach, just add indentation to each level of a nested ternary, works fine in simple cases, but obviously doesn't scale to long chains of nested ternaries and has had other problems. Let's see what this other problem is. I'm curious. Alternate ternary... Oh, uh, somebody wanted a different condition. Interesting. So in 2018, we've replaced that with flat ternaries, which seemed like a good idea at the time, but was not received well. The issue asking it to be reverted had well over 500 upvotes. While we ultimately did revert back to indented ternaries, we wanted to find a better way. Over the last few years, we explored and experimented with many, many possible solutions which would be as readable as indented ternaries in common cases, but also scale to work well in a wider variety of situations. Challenge criteria. Ideally, we'd find one scheme that would meet our criteria. First, in all cases, it should be easy to follow. What's the if, what's the then, and what's the else? And what do those map to? Two, the code should fluidly flow from a single ternary to a chain of two to a long chain of simple cases to something more complex with a few nested ternaries. Most alternatives explored failed this test. Three, the syntax in JSX, TypeScript conditional expressions, which cannot be expressed with if, and normal JS should all look and feel the same. Interesting. So the syntax they picked here has to work in JSX, TypeScript definitions, and just normal JS. And four, it should scale to nested ternary chains of arbitrary lengths. Imagine a TypeScript conditional type with dozens of alternative cases. We don't have to imagine it. We can just look at some chaos. God. This isn't even the deprecated. This is the internal procedure builder for TRPC right now. This is horrifying. So let's see how they solved it. Indented ternaries clearly failed four, arguably one and even three. We have almost always printed JSX ternaries in a flat but readable format, but that unfortunately felt unnatural outside of JSX. Many people in the community were excited about a case style, drawing inspiration from the match syntax from languages like Rust or OCaml, but it did not meet two and our other goals. So it should fluidly flow from a single ternary to a chain of two. Yeah, that's tough to pass. Surprising solution. The good news is we found a formatting algorithm that meets our criteria. The bad news is that it's novel and thus unfamiliar to most developers. Good call out. This is a very real problem when you're doing something different. If you have a pattern that people aren't used to, that's one of the biggest blockers of adopting a new technology, pattern, syntax, anything. But that's why it's in beta. In beta testing this feature, we found developers were quite skeptical when they first saw it. But then after using it for a bit, they didn't want to go back. How are you finding these ternaries? I'm liking the ternaries. I think it makes sense to have them formatted like this. I've also gotten used to them quite quickly. My first hour with this rule on it felt a little odd, but by hour two, I'd used it a few times to solve problems that otherwise would have been ugly refactors to if statements. I'm not going back. I used to hate nested ternaries, but I also hate restructuring a nice line of code into an if else. This new rule adds an understandable linear if else, if else expression to the language and is much nicer than multiple ternaries as nested branches. So we felt we had a winning formula, but we knew it could be a jarring introduction to the community. As a result, we decided to put this new formatting behind a temporary experimental ternaries option for a few months. In the meantime, go ahead and ship what the community has been clamoring for, indented ternaries. Styling overview. 
So what does this style look like? Here's an example. Pet can bark, indented here. Pet is scary, indented conditions. Interesting that this and this are indented the same amount and that this is pushed back a bit. What's interesting is this lines up with this character and everything else is one of the conditions. So if pet can bark, this is the path we go down. If the pet can't bark, vertically go to the next one. Pet can meow. Okay, interesting that uh, the next condition on can meow is the same level, that the truthy goes deeper and the falsy bumps out. That's really interesting. Hmm. Every line that ends with a question mark is an if. Every line that starts with a colon is an else. Every line without either is a then. Here's the code rewritten for case style or can bark dog or pet can meow. You can see this is a nice, concise way to get something approaching a match style syntax in JS with just humble ternary operators. Our new formatting is a fluid blend of curious ternaries, where the question mark's always at the end, and case style, where the question mark's always on the middle of the line. Interesting, yeah. For example, mouse, or peck and bark, or pet is scary, wolf dog. Okay, I don't love this. I gotta use this a bunch. I wanna take a nasty type def and put it through this. Cool. I don't care about all the errors here. I'll just run. Oh, I need to actually put the directory. Oh, no. I just ran that across my entire fucking machine. Fuck me. I don't even want to know how much shit that just broke. We're going to not think about that. How far did it go? Oh, it only hit my legacy folder and a bit of captain. That's fine. I can work around that. That's not too big a deal. Let's see how this looks in the editor now. Okay. That's the before and that's the after. Again, ignore all the type errors because I just ripped this code from the TRPC repo just to see if it was any more readable. And it is, like it's absolutely more readable. First thing I noticed is that the truthy condition just happens online here. So like, okay, yeah, that, that's a subtle change, but I actually like it a lot. By the first line, we know the truthy out. So if this is true, we escape immediately on parser. Dope. If it's false, we know that's the immediate next line. Cool. So now we have a new condition. Infer, parser, parser, cool, question mark. I would have thought this would have been tabbed out. So if I understand this correctly, I'm just going to comment all of this out. I'm so sorry, phase. T extends number. So that's the default, new formatting. What's weird to me is the tab levels of these both being the same. I took a complex example. It was still hard to read. I took a simple example and it's still hard to read. I'm sure that if you use this for long enough, it'll become much better than previous nested ternaries. And if you need nested ternaries because you're writing complex type definitions, this would make a lot of sense. I still don't like that they are encouraging using this instead of JavaScript control flows. They end up just refactoring their code to an ugly series of if else's. I don't like that they're framing it that way because again, with the earlier point of people not being familiar, ternaries will never feel truly familiar to the average JavaScript developer once they get into this nested help. This helps. So in the places it's necessary, which of the listed places, JSX, TypeScript definitions, and normal JS, the only one of these where this is necessary is TypeScript. And for that reason alone, this is a great change. The fact that complex type definitions will be some amount more parsable means this is worth it. And I'm excited for this to go through, but this is nowhere near good enough for me to start using or recommending the use of nested ternaries or even just inline JSX ternaries in the average code base. This is just so much harder to read than the example of breaking out components I gave earlier. If you can put early returns in a function, everything's so much more readable. And yes, there's some overhead for defining functions. That's not where the overhead slowing your app down is most of the time. I am excited for a future where ternaries aren't as painful, but I still think that when you hit that point where your code is harder to parse, breaking it out into named functions that make the control flow clearer is the right call almost always. So once again, make sure your code is readable top to bottom. That's my go-to test for how maintainable code is. And ternaries almost always fail it, even with the effort going into making them a better experience. Still a rough thing for me to recommend. Those are my thoughts. Oh boy, I have to talk about knowledge coalescence someday, don't I? Anyways, this was fun. Good seeing you guys as always. I'll pin a video in the corner about other ways people use TypeScript wrong because it seems to be a lot of those these days. Thank you as always. See you guys soon. Peace nerds.